Okay. The, uh, the prop masters, when I, I was at Universal doing an Ironside, I think it was eight years later, seven years later, he uh, came up to me and handed me a bag and said, here, don't look inside of this until you get home. Put it in the tr- trunk car. And I did. I got home and I opened it up and it was the original Wolf of Doll. Wow. This, this, I was at a show doing a cross con up in... Uh, Oh, up in, uh, oh. Up in uh, Orinda, Orinda, California, and a guy named Gary Sandrini made three of these. He made one for me, he made one for Mike Westmore, who was the original makeup man who created Woof Woof, uh-huh. and he made one for himself. And he's pretty good. I think I did a really good job for being oh, just yeah. a oh, you know, yeah. fan. That looks incredible. Tell us about the Munster's slot machine uh, for our listeners. Right over his shoulder there is... Uh, Tell us about that. It's piece. funny that slot machine um, in 2001, IGT International Technologies, the biggest maker of slot machines in the world, decided that they were looking for ways to get more activity out of their machines, and they wanted to see if TV shows would be a good grabber to draw in potential players. And they used the Munsters as their test show, and it became the yeah. most successful slot machine of all time. <laughs> and it's still 21 years later, it's hard to find. They're still in use occasionally, but for about 10 years, they were the go-to machines and there was always several of them in, uh, lined up in any casino. Now, obviously at that time, I did a lot of casino um, promotions and marketing and this and that. The, uh, the, the lady actually won the number one Dragula at the Seminole Indian Casino. I believe she won it oh. in a Munster slot machine tournament. Really? The years has been a ton of collectibles. Monsters, but one yeah. one odd one. Jim has a special one here for our viewers. Is he's this, hold, he's holding up the LP uh, cover for our view. It's Which, been reissued. Uh, the newest teen age singing group, <laughs> but none of none of the cast were on this album. Uh, no, this was uh, this was into the marketing department. Uh, mm-hmm. And NBC, you know, NBC Universal. They were the Monsters was a very heavily merchandise show, very successful. Very valuable stuff, uh, no, uh, especially the original '64 stuff. But uh, the new mm-hmm. reissues of those albums, I believe that album is probably blue, if I remember yeah, correctly. Inside, no, this I don't know. is. I love. I collect. I, I collect vinyl. And I love color splatter. Look at this. What one. color is that one? Is orange with. Oh, black. oh, okay. You got the splatter. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that, that those reissues. Well, that's a reissue. That's not original. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. That's a reissue. Okay. That's brand, so yeah, brand, I, I yeah. see a lot Last of those year. come across my. I see a lot of those come across my table, and it just gives you an idea. Um, we didn't miss a trick in the show. It was it was well produced. It was well marketed. The music was top notch. I've heard probably dozens of variations of it, from the Boston Pops to the London Philharmonic to Brian Setzer opens up mm-hmm. his Christmas show with it to Fallout Boy <laughs> yeah. used it as a riff a few years ago. Yeah. Um, it's. It's it's not uncommon to hear almost any garage band to major, you know, uh, professional band be able to utilize the Munsters theme. It's part of American culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very catchy riff. And it was like a sur- surf music kind of feel to bit. it, like like this album. This this album's really good. You know, as far as musically, it was a band called the Go Go's, which is not the. Yeah girl group not girl, the girl group yeah yeah it was three guys yeah. and i read that glenn campbell and leon russell are also on this album mm-hmm. the monsters album. wow they brought in some wrecking crew and leon yeah. russell that's pretty that's pretty serious talent there 